So let me set the scene for you. The Senate flips in Georgia for the first time in more than a decade. We want to celebrate this huge victory in Georgia. And then the Capitol gets stormed. These are pro-Trump supporters who have taken to the steps. They've been evacuated out of safety concerns. I was under the assumption that they would be safe in the chamber. That was before we realized that people had actually breached the building. It looks now like the Capitol, the, the police are un yeah, unable, people, unable let me break to hold away these from people. You. I could see some of the floor staff running. I, you just don't see that. We had just made the touchdown and we're just about to do our victory dance. And then the whole stadium burned down. Why do white men always try to take our joy? It's always a challenge to separate your own emotions when you have to talk about a difficult subject and to try to make that subject funny. And sometimes having that emotion can be good, even if it's fear. You know, if our audience is connected with us, maybe they're feeling the same thing, and maybe there's some comfort in us expressing how we're feeling in a way that gives them catharsis. Watching the insurrection unfold was very emotional. It was an objectively just kind of ridiculous thing. You know, you have all these morons dressed up in these costumes. Like they were going to friggin' trees and Comic-Con. I was just like, wait, what? You can't do that. Not in, not in my America. No, 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 no. And then I called one of my boys up and he was like, yeah, man, some of these white people crazy. As things unfold, you realize like, oh, this isn't a bunch of idiots just doing something dumb. Like this is an attack on our democracy. I don't even know how to describe what I was feeling. We were just slack jawed at my house. I was sick to my stomach. One of the big disappointments though with January 6th was we really wanted to celebrate the Georgia Senate victories. We were really excited to talk about it. It was a positive story coming into the new year. The insurrection just kicked it out of the news. To have this insurrectionist do this on that day when we wanted to be really excited and really happy really sucked. We are always looking to try to figure out what the Wednesday version of the story that people are talking about the previous week will be in terms of January 6th. What we started to see very quickly were Republicans, leaders condemning the violence. The president's language and rhetoric crossed a line and it was reckless. Uh, I disagree with it. Uh, and, and I have disagreed with the president's language and rhetoric for the last four years. You know, saying that we need to, you know, come together and not resort to violence and whatever. It was just sort of like, yeah, you're, you're not a fucking hero, Ted Cruz. Accountability is a theme on this show, holding people's feet to the fire. We all feel strongly about. These were the same people who were encouraging it and had been fanning the flames for a very long time. So what we decided as our next Wednesday version of the insurrection story was really political accountability. Celebrating Georgia really just got whittled down to a little celebration of what an absolute dork John Ossoff is and how he used to be in an acapella group. Oh, John Ossoff, you're a fucking nerd. Sorry, it's an acapella group. I remember that show and Sam was fired up and pissed off and it was awesome. I hate it then this way. Oh my God, I hate it. You don't hate it to end this way, Lindsey Graham. You've been complicit in this evil for years and now you're bummed by it? F you. Sam is so involved in every step of the process and you know she cares so much about it too. And I feel like a lot of the times her feelings align with a lot of the way that we're feeling. The fury that I have, Sam has. So sometimes it's not such a far reach for me to write in Sam's voice because quite often Sam's voice is my voice. I'm fighting for myself, I'm fighting for my family and I'm fighting for people who are even more marginalized than I am. That's what I think is important. And the fact that I can talk my on a television show <laughs> is really cool. Law enforcement is on high alert ahead of Inauguration Day. Tonight, the nation's capital is a fortress. Thousands of rioters swarmed the very spot where President-elect Biden will be sworn in. Rehearsals got underway Monday for an inauguration like no other, determined to witness the transfer of power. The road to Inauguration Day was a very rocky road, but we got there and I think everyone was just tense. Let this happen, this transfer of power. So even though we weren't bracing ourselves for something bad, at the same time, we were having everyone watch the news at once. We knew that something could change. And the minute that JLo sang in that crystal white frost princess outfit, just that white witch extravaganza, let's get loud. Let's get Has 
anyone ever said let's get loud at an inauguration before i loved it and that's when i felt peace i was like all right nothing's gonna happen to us we did it we made it (laughs) keeping the biden administration accountable as well as the democratic party is something that we'll continue to do on this show. Absolutely, 100%. I think the focus of the last four years has been we need Donald Trump out of office. Yes, we got Donald Trump out of office. He was a a nightmare. But just because Biden got elected, the work's not over. If we want better from our leaders, we have to demand it. Our moral compass is firmly in place. I think we can celebrate victories if and when things go astray. We will absolutely discuss that on the show as well. When our political leaders step out of line, we need to take the words of J-Lo very seriously. Let's get loud. 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 loud. 